Hey what's up guys my name is Ritish and today we're doing this exciting tutorial on this underwater slash splash effect. So a while back one of my clients showed me this reference of a manscaped advertisement and they asked me to recreate this effect and I just thought that it would be cool to show you guys what it took to recreate this in Blender EV and Adobe After Effects. So let's just get started without wasting any more time. So I chose this flashlight as my 3D model and I was fortunate enough to find a 3D model for free on cgtrader.com, link in description. Uh, let's start by creating a cube in the scene and I'm gonna resize it so it encapsulates the whole object. Now I'm gonna assign a material to this cube. If you just hover over principal BSDF and press V, it will assign a principal volume shader on it and nothing's going to be happening at the moment, but let's go to the shading tab and rewire the nodes from volume to surface to volume to volume. And you should see this dense cloud all of a sudden. But since there is no visibility of the object, let's decrease first of all the emission strength to zero because we do not want any light affecting it apart from the ones that we create. And let's decrease the density to something like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02. There you go, the object is visible now. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, we do not want any environment lighting that is already present in the scene by default. So let's go to the world properties and decrease the strength value. And your scene should turn pitch black after this. Now let's go ahead and create a light of our own and I'm gonna create a spotlight uh, which is best to demonstrate what this principal volume shader is doing. So if you were to go to render view now after you have played around with the settings, the strength and the color, let's change the color to a bit more aquatic color since that's what we're going for. And if you were to go in render view, you will see this beam of light coming towards the object, which is the whole purpose of this principal volume shader. Let's also create a camera of our own and a quick shortcut. If you want to snap your camera to your current viewing angle, just press Ctrl Alt 0. If this shortcut is not working out for you, make sure your emulate numpad is turned on in the preferences. And this is something I like to do. Just go to the camera settings and just maximize this passport out so we do not see any of the nonsense that's happening outside of the camera. Let's also enable all these EV rendering settings so it gives us the best results. So now that we know what this principal volume shader is doing, let's start to set up the lighting for the scene. I will start with creating an area light which will act as a rim light uh, for our scene. So I'm going to place it right behind the torch and it should create a silhouette of our object. That's the flashlight. And let's change the color to a little aquatic color since we are going for an underwater scene. After this, I'm just duplicating this area light and I'm going to replace it with a point light. And this is just going to act as a fill light to increase the visibility of the object overall, especially from the front. And I'm also going to duplicate this fill light uh, once again, so we have some more visibility for our object. The next light that we're going to be creating is not really a light, it's, then, it's an emission shader for the glass of the torch that we're seeing. It's no coincidence, it's a flashlight, so obviously the glass right in front of the torch, if the bulb is turned on, will be emitting yellow light, so I've just assigned an emission shader to it. The next light that we're going to be creating is going to be this beam of light, which is going to be coming out of the flashlight. To do that, let's duplicate any of the lights in the scene and place it right in front of the glass of the torch and just change it to spotlight and change the color to the yellowish tint that we're going for. Play around with the size and the radius of this object and if you were to render a frame you should get a lot more visibility of what's happening in the scene. So the next light that we're going to create is supposed to light up these inner edges of the torch. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to duplicate a point light and I'm going to place it right in front of the glass and I'm going to resize it so it fits to the glass. Once you're happy with that, let's create the last light of the scene to create some kind of depth which is still sort of missing. This light is purely optional and it is just supposed to give a bit more stylized look or maybe some more depth to the scene. So just duplicate another point light in the scene and place it far in the background. And if you were to just increase the strength and change the color to some different tint of whatever color you're going for, it will create this really cool gradient and it will add some kind of depth in your scene. And that's about it for the lighting. Let's get started with the animation. Let's reduce our animation 250 frames first. I usually do this for animation. I like to key my last 
frame at the first so i know what my ending position is now go back to your first and then animate where your object is going to start from so since this is an underwater animation it is supposed to come really fast and then slow down really quick so most of the motion happens from 0 to 20th frame and then after it the motion just slows down because the object has entered an underwater body so once you're happy with the animation of the object let's also animate the torch being turned on effect it's fairly simple to do all you have to do is just animate the strength of these lights from 0 to whatever their desired value was so the last thing that I'm going to do is create some kind of depth of field and for that I'm going to create an empty place it at my desired location where I want my point of focus at and then I'm going to go to the camera properties and I'm going to turn on depth of field then I'm going to go select my focus object as my empty and then I can just play with the f stop value to create some kind of depth make sure that you parent your empty to the animated object so it follows the flashlight wherever it goes so once you're happy with this, let's quickly render this out and it should look something like this. Now we're going to require the submarine 3D model to create this transition where a silhouette of submarine is visible and then it sort of fades away and it turns into this torch. So I found this 3D model from cgtrader.com again link in description so once you have imported the 3d model in the scene you have to resize it and position it exactly where the flashlight is to make sure that the submarine follows the flashlight's animation exactly just parent the submarine to your animated object the, the idea is that i'm going to disable the flashlight as my render layer and then i'm just going to create a render of the submarine in the exact position and in the exact animation as the flashlight once you have both the render layers let's import these in after effects so to create this sort of morphing, fading away animation uh, from submarine to flashlight, it's fairly simple. So if you were to just place these layers on top of each other, all you have to do is just animate the opacity of the submarine layer and you should have this cool morphing effect happening. Uh, now to create this splash effect, I'm, I'm going to be using this stock footage, which I found on YouTube. So again, link in description. Once you have selected the splash effect that you want to go with, uh, let's change the blending mode to screen and you can see that it has very hard edges which we do not want. So let's create a mask around it. Once you're happy with the mask, let's feather it a lot. So we get rid of these hard edges and after you're happy with the mask, it's just a matter of placing this splash effect in the right place and animating it so it follows the object throughout. Make sure that you add some kind of blur to this splash to create a little bit more realism to the scene. And you should end up with something like this. Now it's looking pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some particles which should be present in the ocean because of course an underwater body is gonna be filled with life and particles. So I found this stock footage of dust particles again on YouTube, link in description. All you have to do is just place it in the scene and change the blending mode to screen. The next thing I'm doing are just some color corrections and adding some kind of glow to the scene. Now while creating this glow effect, I ran into this problem where uh, the whole of the whole scene was getting this uh, emission which I obviously did not want. So what I did was I created another adjustment layer, put the glow effect on it and I created a mask around the area which I wanted to be affected and I just feathered it up. I also added this vignette to add some kind of point of focus for the viewer and also add a lot more dramatic effect. So the last thing that I'm going to be doing, which is completely optional, is to add this optical flare to the flashlight. Again, I found this on YouTube and link in description. Uh, so let's change the blending mode to screen again and place it to the desired location. Obviously, the color of this object is not matching our flashlight. So let's add a CC toner effect to this. And all you have to do to change the color of this uh, is to change the mid tones of CC toner to whatever color you desire. Now we could have animated this optical flare to follow our flashlight but I ended up doing a quick track of the scene. To quickly track the scene, select our base layer which is this one and double click on it, go to window and choose tracker, select track motion and you should get these two squares uh, so what you have to do is just place these two squares at a point of contrast in scenes for example this position has a lot of whites on the right and a lot of blacks on the left so that's a point of contrast and once you have placed it in the right place all you have to do is just hit this forward or backwards button in whichever direction you want to track the scene 
Once your tracking is done, create a null object. Go to edit target and choose the null object in the scene and press apply. And now all you have to do is make sure that the optical flare is in the right position and then parent that optical flare to the null object. And that's about it guys. I hope you guys got to learn something new from this tutorial. And if you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. If you have any other recommendations and want me to make a video on something that you want, then please leave that in the comment section or you can DM me on my Instagram. You can also check out some of my work on the website. All the links are in the description box below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.